Hi everyone, today we're reviewing the ABOS Cyclops filament dryer and also the ABOS Euros filament storage system. Now you might not be able to tell, but I've actually got really crappy windows in this room. Uh, the seals on them are really bad and it results in this room actually getting quite a lot of humidity and it is a really bad environment for printing and also for storing filament. So when ABOS reached out to me and asked if I wanted to review the systems, I of course said yes, because this is something I've been meaning to fix myself for quite some time now. First we'll review the Cyclops dryer and then we'll review the Euros vacuum pump system. Let's go over the specs of the dryer. It is 150 watt and in the UK at the moment I pay about 35p per kilowatt hour so it costs me about five to six pence per hour to run this dryer. It goes up to 70 celsius and it's got a timing countdown from one minute all the way up to 24 hours or you can just set it to run for an unlimited amount of time. The precision of the temperature control is within two degrees. And as you can see, it can store two rolls or it can fit one big roll. It will accept the 1.75 standard diameter of filament. Also, if you change the, uh, the Teflon tube, it will also accommodate the 2.85 millimeter filament. First, let's go over why you need a filament dryer. If you don't store your filament properly, it will absorb moisture from the atmosphere and this can drastically impair your printing performance. You'll be surprised how much better your prints will look and perform with properly dried filament. I was really surprised when I first dried filament. I was having layer adhesion issues, I was having bed adhesion is issues, the, I had stringing issues, the prints just weren't looking very good, they were looking quite bubbly, and then I stuck it in a dryer dried it off for about six hours, the differences were night and day. And also regardless of what type of filament you're using, you will benefit from filament drying. And when you start getting into more exotic materials such as nylon, drying your filament is really a prerequisite to printing with it. I don't think there's really much debate as to whether drying your filament is beneficial or not. It's pretty much universally proven that dry filament is really what you want to be using when you are printing. Here's a quick retraction test with filament that's been sitting in my room for a few weeks and one that's been dried at 60 degrees in this ABOS dryer for four hours. This is the same ESUM PTG gray filament. Hopefully it illustrates the importance of printing with dry filament. So now let's go over the pros and the cons of this dryer. Firstly, it does dry quickly thanks to its 150 watt dryer. That is much more powerful than than the typical single filament spool dryers that you'll see on Amazon and AliExpress. They typically have a 30 to 40 watt heater in them. They can only get to around about 40 to 50 Celsius. And this means that it does take much longer to dry your filament in those lesser powerful dryers. But as you'll see when we get into the cons, this powerful dryer maybe is a little bit too powerful. But continuing with the pros, I do like the fact that, you know, because it is a powerful heater, it does dry quickly, it brings down the humidity in the dryer down to about 15% very quickly. It only takes about 20 to 30 minutes to get it into that type of range. Another benefit is that it doesn't just have a heating element like a lot of the other single spool filament dryers, but it also has a fan which pushes the air up and through the filament and it's got a, an exhaust at the top here. And this again, just results in a much quicker drying process. Another thing that I like about the dryer is that it is very easy to change the time and the temperature settings. You've got two buttons here. You press the temperature icon and then the arrow buttons to change the temperature. And the same goes for the time. You press the timer button and the arrows to set your timer. Another thing that I did like about the dryer was that it was relatively quiet and I've got it running right now. I'm not sure if you can hear it in the microphone. I have seen some people say that this is too loud and that it clicks. And honestly, I didn't even notice the clicking noise until I turned off my printers and just had this running. The noise of my printers is much louder than the noise of this clicking and the fan running. So for me personally, I did not have an issue with the loudness of this dryer. If you are using this in the same room as your printers, your printers are most definitely gonna be more louder than this thing running. I'll show you some sound level recordings of this dryer and also of my printers to give you an idea of how loud it really is. Another thing I liked about this dryer was that it can fit two spools in it, which was quite nice because it means that when I've got the 
drier running and it's using up energy. I can also put in another roll and get that dried for a future print. It's just nice that you can just, you know, the energy that you're using, you can just use it for the future as well, especially with the vacuum pump system. I can dry a, a spool off with one that is actually being dried while it's printing and then I can store it away in the vacuum bags. The last pro is that it does seem to hold its temperature quite well. I did use a Arduino and a temperature sensor to record the temperature independently from this dryer. It took about 30 minutes to bring it up from Roomba temperature to 63 Celsius, and then it slowly climbed to 64, and then it held that temperature for a two hour duration. I did have it set at 65. So I would say that this is good enough. So let's go over the cons of this dryer. Firstly, the hygrometer. Accessing the power button for this is on the inside. So you've, especially if you've got filament loaded into it, it, it can be a little bit awkward, but you've got to kind of lift it up and get your finger in here and then turn it on and off. I've just left it on. I haven't bothered turning it off anymore. The battery is obviously not gonna last as long, but yeah, I cannot be bothered to take this lid on and off to turn it on and off. Also, another note about this is that it does give you a temperature reading as well, but the button to switch between humidity and temperature is missing in the one that I got. Next con is, it's not necessarily ABOS's fault, but the design of this type of dryer, and most of the dryers do follow this type of vertical lifting of, of the lid. Um, if you've got that on a shelf, that is gonna be obviously a little bit annoying, and I do. I do have my printers on the shelf, and I have the dryer sitting on the shelf below it. And just to access, yeah, the power button of the hygrometer and to access the filaments and load the filaments, uh, you've got to take the whole unit off of a shelf, lift off the lid, and then you can feed free filaments and, and, and work with it. So I did find that a little bit annoying. Um, interestingly enough, ABOS do actually have another dryer that has a side loading door. I think it's the Series X Easy Dryer or something like that. It is a single uh, spool dryer. And I think for someone who is using it on a shelf, that is probably a an easier solution to work with. Now, another con that I did notice with this unit is there was an inconsistent distribution of heating with it. Um, one side was noticeably hotter than the other side. When I measured it with an infrared thermometer gun, I could see that the difference in temperature was quite apparent. And this actually goes on to the next point because as I said, this dryer is, is very powerful. But the problem is, is that if your filament gets too close to that uh, heater exhaust, um, it can actually deform the filament. And I wanted to investigate this a little bit further. So I set up kind of like a drooping test. I laid out various different uh, bits of filament at various different heights from the filament dryer exhaust. And you can see that on the right side of the lowest filament, it does start to droop. And that is because of that inconsistent temperature reading. Staying with this heater element, the, the other con is that it is too close to, to the filament. If you've got a full roll, then your filament will be very, very close to this heater element. If your filament unwinds slightly, so if I you know, kind of go like this or something, and the bottom bits of the filament are not tightly wound around your spool and they do drop down and get close to that heat, heater element, you will start to see some kinks and deformation appearing in your filament. And that is obviously gonna cause friction if you're running the filament then through a, a Bowden tube or something like that because it's gonna have a kink in it. Uh, a few solutions that I could see with how to fix this is that as we could see in my drooping tests, it was only the bottom filament that did actually deform. Um, if you can raise the filament slightly higher, and I have printed bigger rollers to just lift this filament higher up from the heater exhaust, I think that will pretty much solve your issues. Now, I didn't notice any of these drooping issues or kinks when the filament was actually being printed with. And that's because it's obviously being continuously pulled and it's continuously rotating. So there isn't ever you know, a bit of filament that is stationary over that heater. You do have to be careful if like this, I'm printing with one and that one is rotating, but then the other one is just stationary. And if the filament isn't tightly wound and you've got any bits that are kind of dropping down close to that heater element, that is when I did notice uh, the kinks forming. So if you're drying your filament while it's printing, I didn't see any issues with this. It was only a few times that I did notice these kinks, but when I was researching about this heater, I did see some other reviews did mention this 
issue. And I did reach out to ABOS and I did bring up all of these issues. I, I showed them the results from the Drupin tests. Unfortunately, I didn't actually get a reply for them, but I have seen on the AliExpress page, they do have a, it looks like a new version of this dry out. From what I can see, it does look like the heater element and the fan exhaust has been moved lower in this compartment. And therefore there is now more space between the filament spool and the heater. Maybe that new model does fix this issue. But as I said, if you're printing with it, it's moving, you're not gonna have an issue. Bigger feet and raising the filament spool higher up from this uh, heater element will fix the issue. And the last con, I, I guess, is maybe just a comment about the overall industry with these dryers. And that is that they seem expensive for what they are. I took apart this ABOS dryer and it's literally a few circuit boards a heater and a fan and that is it getting close to a hundred pounds for that does seem to be quite expensive abos they are competitively priced you can get the single spool dryers that don't have a fan um, they're going to be much less powerful they're going to take much longer to dry and even those are in kind of like the 30 to 40 pound range so yeah, it, it, it does seem that these products, you know, maybe there is something that I'm missing in, in the production of these, but you know, for what yeah, for what they are, it does seem it does seem a little bit expensive. I mean it's it's basically just a plastic shell, some heating elements, a circuit board, and then just some perspex that has you know just been bent into into a lid. And to talk a little bit about the the quality control of this lid, you can see that it's been you know glued together. Where it joins here at the back, the lid, it's not perfectly flush. So, you know, it's not been perfectly put together, but it does create a seal and it does work fine as a lid. But yeah, just, just a little comment about the, uh, the quality control of maybe some of the parts. So would I recommend the Able Cyclops? I think that if someone is looking for a filament dryer, and you should definitely be looking for a filament dryer if you are doing 3D printing, I think that is pretty clear. Uh, if you have two 3D printers, you run them at the same time, I do feel that a dual dryer like this is probably the better way to go. It does dry your filament very well. It is powerful, although it can be maybe a little bit too powerful if the filament gets too close to that heater. I would personally have liked a side loading option for it being on a shelf, but from looking at what is available in the market, this is pretty much the best option out there. There are a few clones of this and they are all in the same price range. I know that ABOS has been reviewed before and generally their products are pretty well received. I'm definitely gonna keep it. I'm definitely gonna continue to use it as my dryer. I think as long as you make sure that your filament is not getting too close to that heater, as I said, you can easily print some bigger rollers to move this filament spools higher up, then you won't have any issues. But if you don't do that, then yeah, make sure that you're keeping an eye on the filament to make sure that it is either constantly moving or, or it's not unwound slightly and the filament isn't getting too close to that heater element. So next we're gonna review the Euros vacuum system and I'll keep this short and simple because it's quite a simple product to be honest with you and it just plain works. This is the vacuum that you get and these are the vacuum bags that you get. They don't come with these silica beads. I've put these in here to make sure that the filament does stay nice and dry. But basically all you do is you just unscrew the cap on these bags, you stick your filament in it, you screw this vacuum pump onto it, and then you press the start button and it will act as a vacuum. It will just suck all of the air out of the, the vacuum bags. And I've used these type of vacuum bags previously for storing clothes and, and bedding and those type of things. And I was actually never that impressed with these type of bags because after a few weeks, they wouldn't be vacuum sealed anymore. The air would have got in and they would have just inflated. I'm actually quite surprised that th these ones are the best vacuum bags that I've actually tried. This has kept its, its vacuum seal for, I've had this, in this bag for over a month now and it hasn't inflated so they do work really well um, as i said you know you can 
further increase the performance of these vacuum bags by putting some silicate beads in there. I would probably put them in a bag so they don't go all over the filament spool like I've got here. This was just got a tiny bit of filament, filament left in it and I just wanted to test that it did actually keep a good seal. And I can confirm that it does. I would prefer maybe a system that is maybe just like a big box that I could like store and would be vacuum sealed. But I think if you've just got a few spools, you're gonna have them sitting around for a long time. And I'm kind of like that. I like to buy a filament when it's on sale or something like that. And then I end up just storing it up here. I may I maybe open it, I maybe print a few times and then it just sits up on my shelf collecting moisture. This is a very quick and easy solution to making sure that basically your filament does not absorb moisture. So this is, yeah, this is a really, really good and easy system to use, definitely. I'll put links to both of these products in the description and I will also put links to the uh, to the rollers that I designed and printed to lift these uh, filament spools just a little bit higher up as well in the description. Thank you for watching. Remember to like and subscribe. Happy 2023 and I'll catch you all later.